Welcome to the Numerate Rules video, part one. Let's take a look at the game components. Open the box and take out the game board and the six origin cards. Next, take out the 12 narrow science category tiles and the 12 wide humanities category tiles. Then lift the inlay and remove the 60 second timer and the game piece. There are 24 sets of category cards, 12 sets of science cards on the left and 12 sets of humanities cards on the right. Next, let's set up the game. Place the game board in the middle of the table, place the shared game piece in the center of the board, and set the timer nearby. Each player takes an origin card, in this case, three origin cards for three players. Then randomly select four narrow science category tiles and four wide humanities category tiles and arrange them on the board. Finally, take out the game cards corresponding to each of the eight category tiles on the board. You may want to pause the video here to set up the game. The objective of Numerate is to construct a number line of at least 10 cards from at least 7 of your 8 chosen categories and then complete a final challenge. More on the cards and number line in a moment. Let's take a look at the card layout. One note, people's first reaction when looking at the question cards is often, wow, these questions are way too hard, I'll never get them right. As you will see, you do not need to know the exact answers, and you often don't even need to have a very close guess. Hang in there for a couple minutes and you will see what I mean. On the top of the card is the question. In the middle, if it's relevant, is the units for the answer. On the left side of the card is the primary answer. Further down is additional background and information about the question. In the bottom center is the date the question was validated, if that's relevant. And in the lower left corner is the serial number of the question. The type size of the text on the actual question cards is quite small, and that will be remedied in the next version of the game. There are three types of question cards. The first just has a simple numeric answer. For the second, units are specified, and the card reader needs to tell the other players the units that are expected. And for the third, there are two unit options offered, and the reader needs to tell the other players those options. You use these cards to construct a number line. A number line is all of your cards placed in ascending numerical order from left to right. The lowest number is zero, the highest is 10,000, and answers may or may not have a decimal. Each player has their own number line, starting with an origin card. Let's take a look at an example. The question is, how many vertices does a cube have? You don't need to know the exact answer, you just need to know where it fits on your number line. I'll guess there are fewer than 50 vertices on a cube, and since the answer is 8, that is correct, and I place the card to the left of the origin on the number line. On my next attempt, the question is, how many of the world's golf courses are located in the US? And the answer is in percent. I'm going to guess between 8 and 50 percent, and since the true value is 45 percent, the answer is correct, and I place the card between the 8 and the 50 on my number line. The next question is, how long is the term of a US senator, and I'm offered the option of answering in years or in months? I'm going to guess less than 8 years, and since the answer is 6 years, I win the card and add it to the left of the 8 in my number line. If I had chosen to go with months and answered greater than 50 months, I would have placed the card to the right of the 50 on my number line. Finally, what if I have a card with an answer that is already present in my number line, in this case 50, both between 45 and 50, and between 50 and 72 are correct, and I may place the card in either location. Let's take a look at gameplay. Players arrange themselves around the board, and each one places an origin card in front of them. The game piece starts in the center of the board. Choose a player to begin. This is the first active player. In individual play, the question reader is always to the right of the active player. You can be more flexible with the question reader in team play. The first active player moves the game piece to one of the four adjoining tiles. The game piece will never return to the center square. The reader then reads the question from the top card of the selected category in this case geometry. After the question is read, anyone may choose to start the optional 60 second timer. The first round will be relatively easy as the only options are below 50 and above 50. If the active player correctly answers fewer than 50, they win the card and place it to the left of the origin card. The active player then has two options. One, pass their turn to the player on their left, or two, risk the card they just won for an additional turn. I will say more about risking cards in a moment. If they answer incorrectly, the next player clockwise may attempt to add the card to their number line. Attempts to answer the question proceed clockwise until someone wins the card, or until all players except the reader have attempted to answer. 
If no one answers correctly, the active player's turn ends and play proceeds clockwise. After the first turn, the new active player must move the game piece to one of the three adjoining tiles. They may not leave the game piece on the same tile. Risking Cards Whenever a player wins a card, on their turn or someone else's, they become the active player and they have two options. One, they may pass their turn to the next player and keep the card they just won, or two, they may risk that card for another turn. If they choose to risk the card, they move the game piece to one of the three adjacent tiles and try for another card. If they again answer correctly, they may try for a third card, this time risking two cards. A player may win a maximum of three cards on one turn. If they answer incorrectly at any point, they must discard the one or two cards that were at risk and the next player may attempt to win the current card. Each player proceeds in this manner until they become a challenger. To enter the challenge phase, a player must both create a number line with at least one card from at least seven of the eight categories and win at least ten cards, not including the origin card. If this is your first game, I recommend you play the game and watch part two of this video when someone enters the challenge phase. Thank you for playing Numerate and please contact me at any time with questions and feedback.